This is Brian of Triphonic, and today I'm going to talk a little bit more about the fundamentals of FM synthesis and talk about how to make an expressive enveloping sound like this. In the last video I talked a bit about the basics of uh, the carrier and modulator um, and how to route the operators to each other and um, ratios and so on. So um, I want to start with talking about um, another aspect of um, FM synthesis. Instead of routing um, one operator to another, so for example I can enable operator E here and route it to, to modulate F. Um, so I already know that. Um, but what I can also do is route an operator to feedback on itself. So right now I just have operator F and I'm playing a sine wave. We can see that down below here. And what I can do is uh, if I find the junction point right above um, this operator, it's the output of this operator is going to feed back into the input. And so it's going to modulate it. So if I have the sine wave, the more level of feedback, I get more harmonics. And it begins to look more like a saw wave. And you can see that happening here. And if I increase the intensity even more, starts to get a bit noisy and at maximum intensity it's a very chaotic sound but it's good to be aware that this feedback can help you get closer to a sawtooth waveform um, in traditional FM synthesis you're dealing mainly with sine waves um, in FM8 however you can select any like lots of different types of waveforms and that sort of opens up a whole new world but I'm gonna sort of stick with the traditional approach for right now not only can feedback be used on a carrier, uh, as in this situation, but I can have a modulator here, so operator E, and I'm going to route that to F. Right, and now I can have uh, operator E um, feedback on itself as well. And it allows me to get a little bit more intensity. So if I get rid of this feedback, here's 100% modulation of between of E modulating F. So now if I start to have E feedback on itself, I can get uh, more different um, timbres happening. And some gnar some gnarly stuff in the middle here. And once I get about uh, above, you know, uh, 50 or so here, it starts to get pretty chaotic. Um, last time I talked about just setting a very simple decaying envelope. So to emphasize the front part of the sound, so the attack portion. Um, there's also, uh, what's nice about the envelopes in FM8 is you can have as many breakpoints as you want. So if I control click here, I can add a bunch of different points. And what this potentially allows me to do is create some interesting rhythmic patterns. They have some uh, presets here as well. There's one that's called rhythmic pattern. You, it's just so you can get the idea. So um, even without an arpeggiator or any LFOs happening, you can get uh, you know pretty interesting, um, pretty interesting sound. So I've got this uh, modulation page here, and here's where I can assign um, my. Uh, Here's my modulation sources, and here's my destinations. So I've got LFO1 and LFO2 here, and then I can assign them to any of these destinations. So I'm going to assign LFO1 to modulate the level um, of, of uh, operator E. So let's, uh, let's hear what that would sound like. So that's pretty interesting, and I can change uh, the waveform here to um, square wave. Increase the rate of it. So those are all things that you can do, and um, and there's there's lots of other modulation options that you have in here um, as well. In addition to modulation, another thing that you can do in here is um, you can create sort of multiple uh, what I consider like multiple voices. So this whole area here, this FM matrix, um, 
this is, you know, like one voice that I have happening here because there's one output. Um, and so I could create another chain that's, that's similar to this. So I'll create another carrier and another modulator. So here's uh, D is going to be my carrier and C is going to be the modulator. So I'm going to set this output. Um, well, I'll set it to about 50. Um, and I'll bring this other one down. Just we don't. I don't want to clip the output. Um, and uh, then I could uh, set C to modulate D. And, I'll, and I'll, what I'll do is recreate the same settings that I have over here. So give it some feedback here. And um, then what I could do to uh, keep things, uh, you make this sort of a bigger sound is I can pan these. Um, so at this bottom portion down here, this is the panning, so this would be the left. I'll pan this one to the right. And so then I've got a bit more of a stereo sound, which is nice. Um, and then I can go ahead and uh, to to change things up a little bit more. Um, I could change the ratio of these modulators to maybe change these both to two. And then what I like to do once I once I have my basic settings is to make things responsive to velocity because that's what really gives it the expressiveness. Um, so I can go ahead and make. Uh, these velocity reactive and that's what this velocity knob does here so and I'm just doing it to the modulators just so that um, the harder that I press the keys the more modulation that's going to happen so already this is feeling a lot more expressive um, and then I'm going to offset uh, offset these a little bit so they detune against each other so I'm just going to bring this, not have it be exactly a ratio of two, um, not have this one, I'll do this one in the other direction a little bit, not have this exactly be a ratio of one. You get a little bit more movement happening in the sound. And then what I'm going to do is uh, adjust the envelopes for um, the modulators, so for C and E. Um, so I can go to this envelope page where I can sort of view everything together. I can click on envelope C, and um, to start, I want it, uh, envelope E to, to mimic it, so I can link them together using this link button here. Um, so maybe what I'll do is uh, I could have it decay, or it um, might be nice to have a longer attack on this. I like that. It's maybe a little bit too intense. It's going to depend on my velocity as well. But I like those those type of sounds, those ones that have a long attack and get more intense as as uh, as you play it. And if I wanted this to be related to something uh, in the tempo of my song, I could turn on the tempo sync here and uh, and and set move this to. Uh, make it a quarter note. Um, and then a, another thing that we can do to actually make this sound a little bigger, and this is before we get to any of the effects, we could add, there's all, all sorts of effects in here, but I can go to the master section here and uh, enable the unison so that there's multiple voices playing each note that I'm playing, so I can up the voices to, let's say, six. And have a little, have them detune against each other and spread out the panning. And that's getting into the type of sound that I would use. Um, you know, because there's movement in it and it's wide, stereo, and uh, has has some character to it. 